The Kia Sorento is the new model of Kia's famous people carrier. It's still a seven seater. The diesel version went on sale in late 2020 and now for 2021, there's a plug-in petrol hybrid version. The big difference between this and so many vehicles in its category is that first of all, it has a plug-in hybrid option, but also it's incredibly efficient to run. I'll explain later on in the video, the fuel economy, but it's just staggering. Hopefully you've hit subscribe to the channel by now, and if you haven't, well, now would be a great time to do it. Let's take a little walk around of the car, first of all. So here we have the outside of the new Sorento, and this is the plug-in hybrid version of it. For the money, you're gonna get LED lights, front and back. I have managed to find the boot this time. The handle is under there, but it's an auto tailgate. It is quite a big unit. So if you're someone who isn't a fan of parking big vehicles, it mightn't be the one for you, but it's ginormous. If you do like big vehicles, it's also quite a tall vehicle. That's a side profile with privacy glass on both areas of the back. The last one I had was black all over and you didn't really kind of see the contrast there, but the brighter colors will show the contrast around the, the front grille and down here for the lower bumper area also. Really big 19 inch alloy wheels on this K4 model spec. The tires have this kind of weird pattern up here. This makes it stand out a bit more. I suppose one of the reasons you will be looking at a car like this is if you have a load of kids. Well, two child seats in the middle bench still give you a bit of room in the middle for somebody a bit older and a bit smaller. The leg room, because it has a flat floor, is also massively generous. Class leading, really. And that bench can also be moved to give you further room in the back, giving you more or less leg room. A big selling point in any of these vehicles is just how big is the boot with all seats up, middle row just up. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what the Sorento has. Even with the fully rear seats up, there's still a bit of boot room. And there's loads of places in the back of the vehicle, even if you're in the, the full back rear seats for aircon, charging things. The seats are really easy to pull up and down. Handy feature of the car is that you can open and close the boot from the key and also from the button right here. I always say it, but they're one of those things that if you've had it once, you'll never want to go back. Tons of goodies in the K4, wireless charging down here, heated seats, heated steering wheel. You've got terrain control. You can turn on your camera when you're sitting somewhere. You've got an overview. You can even turn that on when you're in traffic. You can do that in lots of keys. It's actually pretty helpful. There's an automatic switcher here for changing between EV and hybrid EV mode. There's different terrains, including sand, mud, and snow, because this is a permanent all-wheel drive vehicle. Storage under here, it's nice and generous. And you can control so much of your display on your clusters from buttons here. Adaptive cruise control, you can change how close or far cars are as you're following in traffic. Lane departure. You can tell the climate, hey, I just want air on this side if there's no one else in the car with you because you can save a little bit of fuel by not wasting air heating this side of the car. It's a crossover that Kia have brought from some of their full-on electric vehicles. The paddles here don't control regen braking, but they do control the gear changes. The regen braking happens in the background automatically, so you don't have any sort of input in that, but it does work and does its thing subtly in the background, which leads to that staggering fuel economy. And again, just hang on, I'll tell you exactly how efficient this car is a little bit later on in the video. Loads of stuff in the back for passengers. They can charge devices down below at the sides of the seats. You can also move these seats back and forward, even when you're driving and even when there's a passenger in that seat, which probably would, you know, enable you to wind somebody up, um, but it's unusual that you can control from that. You don't see that in too many cars. Your transmission is selected by a little jog wheel here, 
and it's just fancy. Night time, everything's lit up and you can control your cluster and control how colourful it is and what colour it is. There are like so many menus and layers in it that you'd be, you'd be there for days trying to get through it all. And again, if you want the full run through of all this stuff, you can watch it on my previous video of this Sorento new model, but also in the diesel version of the car. It's up there right now. And yeah, those menus are just substantial. You have so many things that you can control through the setup. Navigation. You can do alerts, you can have camera alerts. So it might tell you when there's something coming ahead that might want to check how fast you're going. You can split the screen here, that it's full widescreen or that you have your charging for example and how much range you have on display here you can do carplay and bluetooth android and usb music and android auto and you can have sounds of nature if you want to just be relaxed with some calm ocean waves whatever you're into i also like the three levels of auto within the climate so they're intense modes that are easily touched with buttons. Thanks, calm waves. I've, I've had enough now. And uh, it's just that that's pretty handy, actually, because there's so much stuff at the touch of a button. If you just want the driver's side to be cooled or heated, there's just a button there that you press, and that's it. Two other seven-seaters that I've covered on the channel, for example, are the Peugeot 5008 and the Skoda Kodiak. This car is a lot newer, so there's different things that those cars just mightn't haven't had a chance to catch up with yet. The other thing as well is if you're not quite sure between hybrid, plug-in hybrid, electric, what's the difference? Well, just if you're covered in that area, just skip on. But just to explain to you, the idea is you can charge this car. It has a battery within it, not the same size as an electric vehicle, but enough that will do 45 to 50 kilometers of range. And if you charge it every night, it's really gonna make this car an affordable vehicle to run. But you will have to physically charge it with a cable. It's not a self-charging hybrid or just a mild hybrid. So the fact that it's a PHEV means you do plug it in. You can charge it at public chargers and you can obviously charge it at home and will give you a significant amount of range to just cruise along in relatively cheap driving. It also means you'll be able to drive this car in a huge percentage of your journeys with zero emissions. The only time this car will feel a little bit strained and you'll get that sort of petrol hybrid engine noise going on is, is in, under a hard acceleration and that is really it. The rest of the time it is so smooth, it is so quiet and it's particularly refined. I'm still not going to quite reveal for just a couple of moments how fuel efficient this car is, but it's staggering. <laughs> it really is. You'll get so used to just driving around in relative silence that it's just such a smooth offering. Now, if you fill up those seats with kids, that silence may be a bit curtailed. But if you're in it on your own, I mean, it's a, it's a very pleasant and peaceful place to sit. Even with bigger wheels on it, they handle bumps and the good old Irish roads particularly well. I suppose the drawback of it is it's such a big bus that, you know, there, there is a bit of roll in it and it's parking, it's going to feel big. Driving around narrower roads, it's going to feel big. And... It's just kind of a, a car that if you need to get hordes of people around and if you're, you know, someone who just wants to drive a car, you don't want to drive around a track like Lewis Hamilton, then this car will be, I don't think there's ever going to be a scenario where this car is going to leave you stuck. Because you have that higher up seating position as well, the visibility all around you is, is great. The windscreen is massive. K4 model, you're going to have that. Uh, roof so the light just floods into the vehicle there isn't a squeak a rattle any sort of a noise from any sort of fitting or dashboard in the car so you feel like it's well put together and there's no doubt it's it's not a car that uh, is going to be for everybody because the price is just fairly high but if you were 
downgrading from a more prestige brand, for example. There is nothing I feel in this car that really now, if you take the the snobby glasses off anyway, it like it has everything. And and it still has toys like a Bose sound system and the fact that you can change the lights at night time and electric seats and there's still plenty of gadgets to keep you busy. Screens that look forwards, backwards, overview of the vehicle, the whole lot. So there's plenty of tech in it, especially if you do move up the range. Okay. Here we go. If you plug this car in and you charge it, and bearing in mind the range is about 40, let's call it 45, you might get 50 kilometers out of the range. If you, and, and I was charging kind of every other day, I didn't even need to use it every day because you have the, the petrol hybrid, just leave it in auto mode and it'll, it'll do what it needs to do, but to be honest with you, it's a huge amount of the time it was in EV mode. If you do that, this car is going to do 2.2 to 2.5 liters per 100 kilometers and if you put that into uk mpg that is over 110 miles per gallon from an all-wheel drive petrol beast of a yoke and that's where the real difference between this and lots of other vehicles in in the segment but also this and the diesel one um the diesel 2.2 engine that i've reviewed already on the channel it's there if you haven't seen it yet maybe that will be for some people but this thing pulling up to schools with zero emissions or you know next to zero emissions that's kind of we're already there there's already kind of a a stigma attached to sitting outside schools with diesel engines sitting idle pumping you know around the kids lungs full of nasty emissions so i feel there's already pressure on some parents anyway depending maybe on where the schools are and stuff but yeah i mean it's it's better for everybody if you're pulling up in a hybrid vehicle or an electric vehicle so out of the two would i pick this over the diesel i would i really would it's so relaxing to drive. It does everything it says it will. It lives up to the promise of 45 kilometers out of a charge. And that fuel efficiency is just, it's staggering. Like it's, you just, you don't expect an all wheel drive petrol seven seater to do that kind of fuel economy. And this does it all day long. The car has features such as if you open the door and there's a car approaching from behind it will give you a warning to say caution traffic it's those little things that really set the car apart from some of its rivals because there's so much tech going on inside in almost a week of driving the fuel gauge has barely used one eighth of a tank and you do also get these cameras that Kia have put on both sides of the car so if you're indicating you'll get a view of your blind spot on both sides the visibility as you can see is so huge the higher up seating position also lends itself to adding to that but it's just a massively widescreen view of the outside world as you cruise along in relative silence apart from the tires once you have the battery charged driving on motorways it still copes with that range quite well it doesn't dip in half or anything even though it's a relatively small battery size compared to a full-on EV and because of that torque you get from a hybrid or an EV it moves relatively quickly it's not the fastest vehicle in the world but for that actual usable day-to-day -day range it'll also spot pedestrians there as you can tell and it'll apply some braking force and bring the car to a halt if i didn't act accordingly so the tech is just it's loaded with gadgets to stop you injuring somebody else having an incident if you open the door on top of a cyclist or an oncoming vehicle and it, it's just constantly watching out for things assisting you while you drive one of the most technically advanced keys the car manufacturer has ever produced 
that kind of sums up the seven seater new model Sorento at almost 55,000 euro in this version of it and it started from just a smidgen under 50 it's going to be a car that will probably just be too expensive for some people however if it is in the budget you're after a seven seater and maybe you don't want that full-on commitment of a prestige brand plus the running costs and things like tires and stuff this certainly will live up to any expectations that you may have it's a fantastic car albeit with an expensive price tag Thank you very much for watching this episode of Nobby on Cars. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And there's ways to support us as well with Patreon and PayPal links and everything else down below in the description. And I'll see you on the next one.